Bloom News Brief. More info at fullandbloom.com. During a recent interview with Talk Louder podcast featuring Jason McMaster, bassist Joey Vera talked about how a car crash with Motley Crue drummer Tommy Lee helped launch Armored Saint's career. Joey said Vince Neil tells his recollection of the story in the dirt, which is kind of funny because he gets it all wrong. Vince tells it as I was on the back of a motorcycle with Tommy Lee driving the motorcycle, which conjures up this pretty strange image in my mind, me with my arms around Tommy, Faster, Tommy, faster! A little bit of backstory. I had known Tommy in 80, 81. We were in a band together. This was pre-Motley Crew by six months or so. It was a very short-lived band, but I got to know Tommy and we became friends. So when Armored Saint got together, ironically, I'm not the first bass player in Armored Saint. Armored Saint formed while I was in this other band with Tommy. They had another bass player for about six months, but they were always trying to get me in the band because it was all my bros. It was like, you should be in Armored Saint, but it took about six months for them to convince me. Once I was in Armored Saint, I told Tommy, hey, I'm in this new band called Armored Saint. We play metal like Judas Priest, Scorpions, and Tommy was all into that stuff as well. He was like, oh man, I've got to come see you guys play. As it turns out, we're playing this gig at this ski lodge called Mount Baldy Ski Lodge here in the San Bernardino Mountains. It was literally at the top of this mountain at this ski lodge, and why we thought anyone would go is beyond me. So we all go up there and we play this show, and of course there's no one there except for a few friends. Some of these people were Tommy and a few people we knew together. A guitar player from a band called Stormer, a big band from Southern California back in the day. Tommy's sister was there and a few other people. It was literally, I'm not kidding, probably 10 people in the audience. So what else is there to do but get hammered and get through the show? Mind you, we're 19 years old at this point. We brought our own beer and pot. It ended up just being a big party. The show ends, we're getting ready to leave, we're packing up the equipment, and Tommy comes over and says, hey, me and my sister and this other girl are going to go down the hill and go to this party. You should come. I'm like, I haven't got my gear, but the guys in Armored Saint were like, you should go. It's probably going to be fun. I got in the car with Tommy driving this other girl's car. It was a 280Z hatchback. It was basically a two-seater. In the back, underneath the hatchback is where Tommy's sister at Athena and I were sitting, and that's all that I remember. We left to go down the hill, and I woke up in the hospital the next day. Apparently, what happened was, I probably passed out on the way down the hill, or the crash knocked that memory out of my mind. We got down to the bottom of the hill, and Tommy, I guess, had taken a turn on the off-ramp a bit too fast, lost control of the car, and we went over the embankment, so the car left the road and rolled four or five times. I went through the hatchback and had lacerations on both both of my hands. I almost lost my thumb and I had a big gash on my head. I'm guessing I was probably bracing myself on the glass. Of course, the glass ended up breaking everywhere. Then I woke up in the hospital the next morning and that's the story I was given. Obviously, Armored saying at that point, we were just starting with me. It was kind of a new beginning. This was May of 1982. Meanwhile, I had all these doctor bills from the hospital. I was in the hospital for five days before they let me go. I didn't have insurance. I was 19, so I had to get a lawyer and I went after the girl who owned the car, the girl's insurance. We got a settlement from the insurance company to cover my hospital bills, plus I got an extra $5,000. By the time I was healed, we're talking like the fall, probably October, November. That's when we first did a show at the Troubadour, and that was the first time Brian Slagle came to see us. We were all intimidated because Brian had like the two Bruce Dickinson gauntlet wrist bands with the studs. And you didn't see that too much in 1982 in LA. So he came backstage at the show and he said, I'm blown away. I love you guys. I love what you're doing. I'm putting together a second Metal Massacre album. The opening track was supposed to be taken by Merciful Fate, but they pulled out. They couldn't deliver a studio recording in time, but if you guys can get something recorded, like right now, I'll give you that first spot on the record. He introduced us to Bill Matoyer and we went into the studio. Of course, we didn't have any money. We were just 19-year-old knuckleheads working 
day jobs. We didn't have any money, but I had the money from the accident. I said, why don't I front the cost of the recording, and then you guys can pay me back later, which to their credit, they actually did pay me back a couple of years later. So the money that financed that first recording, which was the five song demo, it later became known as the five song demo. The one song that we took off the demo was Lesson Well Learned. We gave that to Brian and it appeared on Metal Massacre 2. Then we sent that demo out to pen pals and tape traders right after that. A link to the entire interview can be found in the description. More news at fullandbloom.com. Full